Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. This is part two of how to make a vintage 1960s psychedelic rock poster. Picking up from where we left off, open the image you cut and copied onto its own layer in part one. To place your cutout subject into your poster document, press V to open your move tool and drag it onto the tab of your poster. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down onto the poster and release. Position it to your liking. We'll resize it in a moment. Go to the layer mask and press and hold Alt on Windows or Option on a Mac as you drag a copy of the layer mask next to your subject. Presently, the black in the layer mask is hiding our subject, so we need to invert it. To do this, press Ctrl or Command I. Click off the chain link between your subject and the layer mask to unlink them. Now we can move and resize either of them independently of each other. Click your subject to make it active. To resize it, press Ctrl or Command T to open your transform tool. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out or in. Make sure you leave room at the top for your text, and then press Enter or Return. Click the icon at the upper right corner of the Layers panel, and click Convert to Smart Object. Converting your subject into a smart object allows us to modify it non-destructively and even allows us to replace it with another image without having to redo all the effects that we'll be adding to it. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Gradient Map. The colors of your image will look different than mine if you picked a different color for your background. Right now, the Gradient Map Adjustment Layer is affecting all the layers beneath it in the Layers panel. We want to restrict it to just your subject. To do this, we need to make the Adjustment Layer into a clipping mask. Click this icon, or press Ctrl-Alt-G on Windows, or Command-Option-G on a Mac. Let's adjust the colors of the Gradient Map. Click the color bar, to open the Gradient Editor, click the lower left stop and the color box. Type in the color you wrote down for your twirl pattern and then press Enter or Return. Click the lower right stop and the color box. Type in the color you wrote down for your frame and then press Enter or Return twice to close both windows. Next, we'll add a stroke around the subject. Make your subject layer active and click the FX icon. Click Stroke. The size is 9 pixels and the position is outside. If the color box isn't the same color as your background, click it and type in the background color. Then, click OK on both windows or press Enter or Return. Next, we're ready to add text. Click the top layer to make it active. The text layers will go above it. Open your horizontal type tool and choose a font. I'm using Bell Bottom Laser. If you'd like to use this font as well, I provided its link in my video's description. I'll start with a size of 100 points, smooth, and center alignment. Click on your document and type out your text. To adjust the space between all the characters, highlight the entire line and press and hold Alt or Option as you press the left or right arrow key on your keyboard. Then click the check mark. Convert the text into a smart object. We'll warp the text to wrap around our subject. Open your Transform tool and click the Warp icon. Drag the control points to warp the text. 
To ensure that both bottom corners of your text will be aligned, go to the ruler at the top and drag out a guideline to the bottom of your warped text. If you don't see the ruler, press Ctrl or Command R. To see the guidelines, press Ctrl or Command H. Continue to warp your text. When you're done, click the check mark. If you want to temporarily hide your guidelines, press Ctrl or Command H. Click the FX icon and click Color Overlay. Click the color box and type in the color you use for your frame. Then press Enter or Return. Click Stroke, make its size 4 pixels, and the position is outside. Again, if your color box isn't your background color, click it and type in the background color's hexadecimal number. I'll make my guidelines visible again and click near the bottom of my subject to add a second line of text. We're going to warp this line as well, but this time we'll start a little differently. First, I'd like to make my text bigger, so I'll highlight it and drag the slider to a size I like. Then, click the check mark. Convert your text into a smart object. I'll temporarily hide the guidelines. Open your Transform tool and go to the top middle control point. When you see a vertical double arrow, drag it straight up approximately this much. Click the Warp icon and click Arc Upper. In the Bend field, type in minus 20. Then, click the check mark. To mold it to the subject, we need to convert it into another smart object. Open your Transform tool again. Click the Warp icon and drag the control points. Then, press Enter or Return. Next, we'll take the layer styles of the top text and copy it to the bottom text. To do this, go to the FX icon and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag a copy of the effects next to the other text. I want to keep the color of the text, but change the color of the stroke surrounding it. To do this, I'll double click on Stroke and click the color box. I'll type in the color I used for my twirl pattern and then press Enter or Return twice to close both windows. Next, we'll add a third line of text at the bottom. I know it's difficult to read given its size, but this is typical of psychedelic posters. You can always make it bigger if you like. Click on your document below your other text. I'll type in a size of 30 points, however, Depending on the amount of characters in your line of text, feel free to make your point size bigger. Click the check mark. As before, copy the effects to your new line of text. If you want to change the colors of both the text and the stroke, double click Color Overlay and click the color box. I'll type in my twirl color and press Enter or Return. Then, click Stroke and the color box. I'll type in my background color and press Enter or Return twice to close both windows. Lastly, we'll add a paper texture to the poster. To do this, we'll convert all the elements of our poster into a smart object. Scroll to the bottom of the Layers panel and Shift-click on the background. This will highlight all the layers in the Layers panel. Then, convert them into a smart object. Go to Filter 
and Filter Gallery. Open the Texture folder and click Texturizer. Choose Sandstone. The scaling is 100%, the relief is 3, and the light is from the top left. Then click OK. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.